I wish it was wine. I need some wine right now. That would be good. <laughs> well if we could play it from there that might also be a solution but i think people are actually leaving us to watch the video so that's good Again, for the people who are just checking in, uh, please first go to the uh, SFL recordings, FL, SFL, WF post presentation and watch the video because that actually explains more than anything else. And to believe that we thought making a video would be easier. Yep. <laughs> that would be good if there was sound. Okay, for the people who watch the video so far do you have any questions for us you can either put your questions of course in the notice board or raise your hand we are only showing the slides here the background comments you have to watch the video unfortunately is there anybody who has any follow-up questions after watching the video Ian, there should be sound. Do you hear me? Uh, Idil, which uh, statements are you talking about? The questionnaire. Um, the questionnaire actually was based uh, on the results from the literature search. Um, a few of the questions we got from other questionnaires, especially the Oxford Happiness Questionnaire, helped us, but uh, we adjusted most of them for the situation within the School of Foreign Languages. Oh, there was a lot of research, a lot. <laughs> The fun part actually about doing the literature search was seeing that in the, past, in the past few years there is now an enormous interest in happiness. Uh, Ian, maybe you can't speak but you should be able to hear us. Um, so even in different countries at this moment, they have started uh, appointing CHOs, and those are chief happiness uh, officers, in addition to the normal uh, CEOs and CFOs, because it is more and more realized that happiness is a separate feeling from motivation because motivation work motivation has been researched a lot in the past year it, well over the past 50 years you could say but happiness has only come up in the past 10 years 
In the video, you see a short video, and that is talking about the upcoming movement of positive psychology. And that is actually a very interesting movement for us, because that is where everybody is saying, yes, definitely, it is becoming interesting. I have no idea what's going on with Ian. Maybe Essen again knows the answer. I have no idea why he has no sound. I'm sorry for him. So happiness really is very much in the center of attention at this moment. I hope people are able to see the video and watch the video. <laughs> Charles, I can see you are back. Did you watch the video? What did you think about it? Um, do you think that research into happiness can actually help you become a better teacher? Microphones are allowed now, so if our friends want to, you know, speak out loud. Sure. Yes, please. I think that one of the biggest problems that we have with emotions when we talk about influencing emotions is the fact that they are 50% genetically determined. So when people start thinking about when do you feel happy, which level do you need to feel happy, it, it's so different for different persons, for different people. Yeah, Idil, I totally agree with you. Some can people you hear can me? Be... Yes, we can. Hold on. That's Ian. That's yes, Ian. Ian. We can hear you. Ian, can you hear us now? That would be terrible if we could hear him, but he couldn't hear us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm actually happy that Haldun has also joined us because Haldun has been with us from the beginning. And I would really like to hear from him because he's usually, he stays away very much from uh, mentioning emotions he's much more into technology hold on what did you think when we came up with our topic hello can you hear me yes we can yes, yes. Uh, first of all thank you again and it's quite interesting and innovative topic and in fact it's just like the elephant in the room it matters to everyone though we may refrain from admitting or saying thing, saying such a thing. Uh, as emo we are all emotional beings and emotions matter. Emotions matter than logic. Uh, because you know our logic, our brain make makeup is like that. 
uh, you know, the frontal part is logical part, but the limbic part is emotional part. And the limbic always wins the fight against frontal lobe. It shows that our emotions are more important than what we think. Uh, to give an example, for example, if you think a house uh, on fire and your logic says stay out of this house because it's on fire, so you don't get into this house. But if your limbic part of your brain tells you this, your child is in the house, get in. So you don't think, you put your rationale away and you get into the house. So our emotions are much important than what sometimes we think logically. And our happiness uh, sometimes doesn't depend on a logic, right? So if we feel happy, then we become more creative. And if we are happy, we teach better. If we feel happy, we teach better than we expect, right? Sometimes you plan your lessons quite well, detailed, but it doesn't go, it doesn't go as much as, uh, as good as you expect. But sometimes we experience the same, the, just the opposite. You don't, maybe you're not that prepared, but your lesson went super. Why? I think that could be the reason maybe that day you felt happy, you enjoyed what you did. That's why I like the topic. That's why I found it very useful. And I, uh, when I checked the literature, I, I learned and I realized that I wasn't the only one feeling such things when experiencing certain events in the classroom. And uh, you are talking about the literature. We actually have a 14 page summary of the literature. Um, in the beginning, we were thinking that we could actually summarize everything in one or two minutes, but uh, in one or two pages. But we actually did write 14 pages of summary. So if you are interested we will be more than happy to send you the summary and I, I hope that next year when we have done the interviews and when we have done the classroom observations we can make it a lot more practical for you guys because that is incredibly important on the screen now you can see the slide uh, about how you can actually become a happier person. Um, looking at Charles's comments, um, overthinking subjects, yes, can have the opposite effect. But I think that thinking about it actually does have a positive effect. The, the, it, the key is in the over here because the moment you start making it too important yes it can actually lead to a level of anxiety i totally agree with you charles but it is something that people should be aware of that you can actually become a happier person and being a happy person now helps you to be a happier person in the future Okay, then, yes, Don, I agree. You're never going to be 100% happy, but you can actually become happier. And I really liked that Haldun, during the process, agreed to do a small test with us with the three gratitudes. Actually, Don also did it. Um, ah, Elif, I love this one. Uh, what about cultural differences? Uh, in some cultures, you are not exposed to as many smiles. I know. Smiling, of course, is an incredibly important outward sign of happiness. But smiles and happiness are not exactly 100% uh, related. Happiness is more an internal feeling. And the smiling can either be artificial, what you see a, bit, a lot in the Far East, or actually hidden, like you say in Russia. Um, a lot of people uh, say that when you are looking too friendly, you seem weak. 
And I think that research has actually put a stop to that one um, because it comes out very, very clearly that actually, and now I'm talking about happiness, not about smiles, that happiness actually makes you a stronger person because you have a better way of coping with the external world. So you have to try to distinguish between the different parts. Yes. Oh, hold on. Beautiful. Yes. Smiling is temporary. Happiness is permanent. I totally agree with that one. Because the smile is very definitely culturally determined. The happiness isn't. And I've seen that working around the world, um, especially in the Far East. What depends on your line of work, Charles? I don't understand that one. Can you explain that one? The smiling, the happiness. Yes, uh, yeah, definitely. And that's why in our research, we are totally, and in our project especially, we are totally focusing it on the classroom. Uh, even though, in general, research shows that happiness in every single line of work does provide better results, especially in the classroom, we can see that uh, the impact is actually enormous. And it is something that actually came from the fact that Don and I discussed with each other that if we go into the classroom feeling positive, 90% of the time we get positivity back. And which means that the class goes more fluently, the results are better. And we were just thinking, is it possible to actually start feeling more positive in the classroom? And are there ways to make yourself feel more happy before you go into the classroom? Bonnie, and, yes. Sorry. Can I chip in? Can I say something yeah, please, here? Please, please, yeah, please. To, to, to increase our awareness of happiness, uh, Don and myself tested each other, and it lasted, I guess, two weeks, right, Don? And um, we tried to find at least three different reasons every day that make us happy. So that was a quite different experience uh, in the first week. In the first week, it was um, a bit easy to find different reasons that make us feel happy. Uh, but in, this, in the following week, we had to think about it because we were banned to repeat the same reason. And it wasn't that easy. But it, doesn't, it, told, it told me something. Even if the reason doesn't change, it still makes you feel happy. So we don't need to find various or different reasons to feel happy. I totally Dan? agree with that. Yeah. Dan, what, would you like to add no, something? No, I, I agree. I agree. Relaxing in the garden, being outside, things like that made me feel really good. Playing with your kids. Exactly. The, the reactions from kids and for the most part are the reactions from students in the classrooms, from getting calls from old students, from things like that, it really helps, really, really helps. So if people think that I don't have many reasons to feel happy, even if you have a few, that would be enough. That's also why psychologists, a lot of the time, they ask you to keep a journal and to say, just to keep a journal, every day for 21 days, and to go for noting down three things that made you feel happy 
or if you find that difficult, uh, three things that actually brought a smile to your face. And, and I learned this while I was studying psychology. And that, oh God, that's a long, long time ago. That's uh, 35 years ago. So it is a technique that has been around for a very long time. But I still try to do this again and again and again because it it sort of brings you back to the fact that there are so many things that, that can make you smile. Um, I told some people the other day, we were talking about it, and they said, well, then give us an example. And on that day, I was sitting in the dolmush, and I saw a dog lying next to a bus stop. And it was just stretching out and having such a good, good time just being there. And I felt this enormous smile coming to my face. And it just made me so happy. And that's how you can see how small things outside can make you happy, can make you feel happy. And if you can hold on to that feeling and bring that into the classroom, totally true. You can bring what you have with you into a situation that goes for positive and that goes for negative. Charles, I have seen a lot of bad things in my life. It's not about smiling, just Elif. It is really about being happy, feeling content, feeling grateful about your life. And I know it's a life strategy. Gulfem, you've got it. That's it. It's a life strategy. And it helps in the classroom. Because if you can apply it in the rest of your life, outside work, people, it feels so good. And I think we are all together in that we have seen our share of illness and death and all kinds of horrible things in our life. But it, it just comes back. Elif, I agree with you. I think that the outward sign of the happiness even makes it stronger. And that's why the smile definitely is important. However, I don't really believe in those smiling workshops or those laughing workshops where everybody has to laugh on command. Because that, for me, is so totally not connected to real happiness. Strange you say that, because I feel better in the streets of Turkey. <laughs> ah, Charles, you don't trust people who smile too much. I... I am a foreigner. I can smile in Turkey. I can smile in Europe. I smile everywhere. But I also know a lot of Turkish women who are very happy smiling. So make it for yourself. Feel the happiness. Feel the gratitude. And we hope that you guys can help us. Making us realize what makes you happy. Um, if you have any other questions, we will happily be answering them. Pelin, you are one of the most smiley people, and I love you for it. So that's it for us for today. We will be coming back to you because this is a two-year project for us. And we love you for helping us with everything. Thank you. We love you too, Body and Tan. Thank you for this lovely presentation and innovative idea. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye.
Bye-bye and thank you for coming.